Welcome to Old Timey Cooking. The reason I call it that is because it, when I was growing up, I never heard of an herb. The only herb I knew was a man. But today we're going to talk about the skillets, iron skillets and iron cookware. The reason I'm a proponent of iron is because it has a constant heat throughout the surface of the pan. Now, there's a couple of things you need to know. If you buy a new one, you have to treat it. And what you treat it with is shortening or lard. This happens to be lard. You take a paper towel and wipe it pretty thick over the skillet, the new skillet. Put it in a 400 degree oven for 20 minutes. And then take it out and take another clean towel and wipe it out. Then it's seasoned and things will not stick. I know my brother one time, his daughter, washed his cornbread iron skillet with soap and he, she said that's the angriest he ever got in her whole life. You do not use soap on iron because iron, when it heats, it opens the pores and then when it cools down, it closes them. So it closes that soap in the iron. So the way you clean it is a coarse salt. Now this is, um, this is a sea salt, but it's coarse. It's not the fine grind, but all you do is you just, I'm gonna use my little skillet to show you. Like, I don't care what you cook, in your skillet if it gets really stuck anything I guarantee you after it's treated all you have to do is put a little water on this and scour it with the salt and then rinse it with clear water and that's the secret to cooking with iron now I have an iron Dutch oven and I couldn't live without my iron cookware and I see a lot of it in garage sales. People don't know how to use it. So that's what I'm gonna to do today. Here I have something else I wanna tell you about. I don't know where you buy this. I got this at an estate sale. <laughs> so I don't know where they bought it. Probably at a restaurant supply. It's a press that you put on bacon, hash browns, grilled cheese, whatever. And it just goes like that in the iron skillet. And you need one of these <laughs> for a lot of reasons. You'll, you'll see how versatile it is. And then there's the iron skillet that you make cornbread in that has sections. But be sure they're treated and do not ever put soap on them. I mean, it's just like instant when you use that salt. And I'll be back with you in just a second to give you one of my daughter's favorite recipes using an iron skillet. It's pineapple upside down cake. Now it's time to make our pineapple upside down cake. It's my family reunion special. I've been making it for many years, but can't make it without an iron skillet. I'm telling you because the, the bottom has to be caramelized. So we start off with a 20 ounce can of crushed pineapple and you drain it. And you, when you drain it, you have the fluid from the, from the pineapple that I'm going to use in the cake batter. It gives it a little bit more flavor than just a plain cake. Okay? So I'm gonna put that right over there for right now. Now when I put it in the cake, I have to add a bit, just, no, I don't even have to add anything. Because here's something I wanna explain to you. When you're creative and you're cooking an egg, one egg is a fourth cup. That's how much fluid an egg is a fourth cup. So if I'm putting four eggs in a recipe that costs for three, then I have to diminish the liquid one fourth cup. Okay, so you better have taken math when you were young. Okay, so we start off with the with the cake mix with a half a cup or a cube of softened butter then we add the cake mix which is 
just a yellow cake mix. It doesn't matter what brand or whatever, but it's a yellow cake mix, okay? You put it in, and this is so easy. And rather than making a daisy cake or something from scratch, this is so much easier. I put in my liquid, which is the pineapple juice, four eggs, where the recipe on the box calls for three, but as I told you, I want a little firmer texture on my cake on top of the pineapple. Okay, so just forgive me for about 20 seconds. I'm going to uh, turn my mixer on. Now, for the sake of time, I did not beat this as long as I normally would. <laughs> I have plenty of time. So, I, uh, I would say mix it about a minute and 30 seconds on a medium speed mixer. <laughs> Good. And there's one other thing that I'd like to say. Whenever you're cooking, take your rings off. One that really ticks me off when I see a cooking show with big old diamonds on that hold germs. And they're cooking with their hands. So take your jewelry off your hands, okay? So we get the batter. Now the um, next thing is let me get my iron skillet. Hold on a second. It is. What we do is we put not quite, let's take some of that out. It's about three-fourths cups of butter. No, not three-fourths. Um, Two-thirds. A cube is a half a cup, so we're going to go down like um, a quarter, okay? So that's an eighth. So we, we melt this on the stove, and I'll tell you what, I'm going to go over here to the stove and get this melted, okay? Be right back. Okay, now I've melted my brown sugar, which is one cup of brown sugar and a little less than a cube of butter that have melted. And when it gets bubbly when you're making this at home, that's when you add a layer of pecan. And I use pecan halves and just kind of sprinkle them over the bottom like that. And then the next thing, remember the pineapple we drained? Then on top of the pecans, you put the pineapple, okay? The full can. And then you spread it out like that and mash it down into the sugar. That's part of the key to a good pineapple upside down cake is getting that bottom all set, okay? Then the next thing is you add your batter. Now, uh, this is one cake mix box. It's too much batter for one cake. So what I do is I just use about three-fourths of this. And I'm so used to cooking by taste <laughs> and sight that it's hard for me to give somebody a recipe because can you, you know, what can, how can you explain it? But I'm doing the best I can. So you spread the batter and the key if you make the batter touch the rim of the iron skillet. Because if you don't, that batter will seep up and make a difference. So just make sure your batter touches the side of the pan. Okay? Then you put that in a 350 degree oven. But I'm going to set that right there for a minute. And the rest of this batter, I don't waste it because it makes great cupcakes for breakfast. So, oh, I want to show you something I forgot. I always spray my cupcake uh, papers with a little bit of, of spray oil. And the reason I do that is because when you use papers for a cupcake, they, they don't get really brown on the bottom, but this way they get brown on the bottom and the top. So I just 
fill each one of the cups and then when you get through, you can put them both in a 350 degree oven, but the, the muffins will only take 30 minutes and the, the cake will take 50 minutes. It takes a long time. And to be sure that it's done, you take a sharp knife and put it down in the center of the cake. And if raw dough comes on the, the knife, you know it needs to cook a little longer. So when you do that enough and you pull it out and it's dry, it's done. Then you take it and go around the edges. Then you invert it into, excuse me, where's my cake? There it is. <laughs> excuse me, hold on a second. See, I invert mine into a platter from my microwave because it's a lot bigger than most plates. So I um, just invert it and that's the way it looks. Isn't that pretty? And all my relatives love it and friends. So you try it. And I will tell you the next time I do an old time cooking segment, we're gonna be doing Senate beans and cornbread. And of course I'll be using iron skillets. See ya.